Hi there. Hope you guys had a great holiday weekend and everybody's back safe home. So, looking through the post today <clears throat> and this couple of weeks, I, I see all the time people struggling with their puppy's behavior or dog's behavior. Now, winter puppies are coming and everybody is going puppy crazy and soon all these small puppies will be at home and they will start being puppy trained. So I want to kind of give you a heads up because I see all the time people complaining that their puppy is behaving A or the dog's behaving B and they tried everything and nothing works and now they get frustrated and then they reach out to use aversive methods like spray bottles, shake your hands and e-collars and you name it, they use it. Now, I get lots of phone calls and emails and text messages of people complaining about stuff where I got referral from or they saw me on Facebook. So here's what's happening. People tell you to do something and you try it. Now the problem is that sometimes the way people explain things is not 100% clear. And I'm one of those. Because of my you know, speech barrier, I sometimes don't explain things right. And so it happens kind of word to mouth, things are changing and from a proper behavior modification method suddenly it becomes a torture tool. Or from a proper behavior modification suddenly it becomes a wrong exercise. Or that puppy gets confused. There are so many factors that go in here. Now, let's take for example puppy biting, which is basically number one cause in US of injuries. Puppy biting, which escalates later to adult dog biting. So basically, 3.2 million people are bitten every year. 400,000 are children. Now. Let's take it and, and change that right away from the beginning. Let's identify exactly what's happening with puppy biting. Puppy biting is a natural drive of dogs to associate themselves with their environment. This, they use their mouth the same way we use our hands. They touch things, they feel things, they taste things, they want to chew on them, they want to hold them, they want to change it, manipulate it, push it, swallow it, whatever you can imagine, they will try to do that with their mouth. Now, they're going through a phase where the puppies are going to implement and see what does my mouth do and how does it affect my environment. And sure enough, copies, puppies also copy their adult parents. For example, you, the dog that is in your family, the kid. So what's happening here is that dogs see do things and the only way they can do things what they see is by using their mouth. So for example, we grab the remote control, we push the button, things are changing, we change emotions about that, and everything is great. Now dogs can do that with their mouth because they don't have hands, they can touch things. So what they do is they get interested about their remote control that you use, and they want to use it as well, right? Now, is it a bad thing to do? Yeah, from human perspective, it's a wrong thing to do and most people will kind of like lecture the puppy, oh, don't touch my control, put some vinegar on it and you, you, apple, bitter apple spray and you know, all these things that people try to do. But the fact is that the puppy is trying to imitate what you do. So, why would you correct something your puppy imitates from somebody he trusts? It will lead to the conclusion that what you do is not trustworthy because every time I try to do something that you do I get punished for it and now the puppy gets confused and then we start the trying for 13 minutes we start trying to implement Road, Road. we try to implement the puppy behavior modification but the crucial factor is that the puppy doesn't trust us so how can we change a behavior if the puppy doesn't trust us. So we have to go back to the basics. Teach your puppy and do things in front of your puppy that you want your puppy to copy you. If you want to play with your remote control, 
let the puppy play with something that is equal or, for example, something that you him on a bone. Now, if the puppy gets mouthy, for example, at your hands, most people will move the hands away and then go back to the puppy and say, bad puppy. Why? On one side, you take your hands away from your puppy because you get hurt, and then your hand attack back your puppy into his face. You see this as a lecturing, your puppy sees this as a predatory behavior, which means your puppy is triggered as a player fight invitation. You see where I'm coming from? So basically what happens here is on one side you try to correct your puppy for mouthing you, and then theoretically you mouth your puppy back without touching. Now, what part do you want to correct? Do you want to crack your puppy from mouthing you? Then don't mouth it back. Do you want to lecture your puppy that attacking is not a good thing? Then you shouldn't attack him either. Because positive parenting, meaning is you can only go to that level of parenting reinforcement that your puppy needs to learn from that. If I go to a puppy aggressive for doing something I don't like, guess what's gonna happen next? This copycat will apply the same structure when he wants something from somebody else, he will apply the same force with his mouth and he will challenge the person or the talk or the toy, whatever he wants. Now, what I usually see with people is when they play with their hands, every time the puppy comes up, their hands, like a magnet, goes to the puppy and touches the puppy. I get it, they are irresistible. But that's not the right thing to do because you encourage the puppy every time you co he comes up for attention, your hand comes down and touches him. You're rewarding your puppy for coming to get your attention and interrupt with your hand. So the hand is the primary attraction and the primary interaction with your puppy. So keep your hands away from your puppy when your puppy comes up. You can do it in another way. You can ask your puppy to sit if it learns how to sit and then reach out your hand to play with your puppy. But remember, your puppy thinks that your hand is your mouth extension. How else would you touch things from a puppy's mind? So basically, when you play with your hands and your puppy, you're basically mouthing your puppy in dog language. So, what's wrong then if your puppy mouths you back? Because you taught him how to do it. Make sense? Now, to put things straight, doesn't mean I tell you not to pet your puppy, but if you do so, make sure that it comes in as a good reward based on education and structure. The puppy comes to you, he wants attention. The only way to get attention is through sit. If you don't sit, you don't get my attention. You cannot just come up and attack me for no reason. If you see me, I don't interact with you. If you don't get an invitation to play, don't play with me. That teaches your puppy also morals and ethics. You cannot just go and take it because you saw it. You have to wait for permission. And please don't come up with the idea that what puppies do because puppies come from wolves. Puppies are pets in the house. They are not in the wildness. And the way they are taught is not to survive in the wilderness, is how to survive in your house. So you have to downsize that information that you got down to a human level of mind. Right? So, puppy parenting means educating your puppy how to survive a complex social structure in a human environment. Dogs are not free in your home in your as puppies. They are dependent on you. And you have to build other relationships so the puppy will trust you. So you, if you don't have a parenting relationship with your dog, where you are the parent and your puppy is the caretaker, uh, the, the care receiver, then you will not be able to educate your puppy. If you're always the good guy and always the playmate, you will always be the playmate and you have no power to tell your puppy what to do. Which leads to a problem later when the puppy is adult, he's going up like to 16 months to a year or two, that you then try to apply things and your dog doesn't follow instructions. Why? Because he doesn't give a bark about you. Because the only thing he had with you is just fun and game. So there is no educational factor here. So you see that implementing it uh, implementing a behavior modification using only one tool doesn't actually work because dog parenting is more complex than applying one thing 
It's just with human parenting. Telling your child not to drive fast on a car when he's driving to his friends. It's not about car driving. It's not about being obedient on the street. It's about having a moral understanding what is appropriate and what not and what means danger. So, does it make sense? So on one side, we tell people, don't think dogs are humans, but the other side, I'll tell you, dogs are mammals, just like we are. They have emotions, they have strategic thoughts. So you cannot just do one thing and expect that to change our environment. So when you implement behavior modification, you have to really understand where this problem is coming from. And for example, the puppy biting. Many times I see people, they don't feed enough food their dogs. And if they feed food enough, sometimes the nutritional factor is very low. And so the dogs starve, basically, having a full food bowl because they don't get the nutrition they need. So the body goes into stress. And the only way dogs can get rid of the stress usually is through digging or biting. See, all of a sudden, we basically created the biting need for the puppy, and it's our fault. So it's not the puppy's fault. On the other hand, we see that we interact with puppies the way we want, and we don't interact with the puppies the way they want and need. Puppies need to tug of war. They need to tug things and chew things. Why don't you get, get an antler, a half cut antler, maybe six inch long, and share a personal time with your puppy where your puppy is biting the, the antler and you're holding it on the other side, which teaches the puppy sharing. Let him chew on that. If he chews by extending your hand, then you have to be careful because puppy teeth are very sharp. You can mark it as an, oh, you hurt me. And it's like, puppy's like, oh, I scared you. I'm like, yeah, sorry. Okay, you're good. Go back chewing again. And so the puppy will learn that chewing on the bone is appropriate, chewing on the hand is not. And so without punishing methods, without intimidating or, or hurting or scaring your puppy, you will be able to transmit that information at a very young age, starting from 16 weeks. It's simple, right? So, thanks for watching. If you felt it was helpful to you, please share, add your comments, ask your questions, and looking forward to hear back from you. Have a great day.